what I enjoy most about reading the stories from the Golden Age is that they they really do transport me to another world. You know, when you read uh, L. Ron Hubbard's writing style, and I've said this many times before, you really get the sense that he was there, that he, he lived uh, these adventures. The writing, it, it, since it brings in such a, a rich tapestry of, uh, of colors, of, of characters, of situations and of places, it really draws the audience into the story itself. Because when you're sitting in that chair and listen to the story, the way they, the, the way they write it, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It feels like you're there. I'm sitting there and it's like, where did this idea come from? Totally fresh, totally original. If you tried this once, you're there, man. You're like, there's no turning back once you, once you start it, you know. The point of no return is 10 minutes into one of these things. They're hard to put down once you start. They're time travel. They take you all sorts of adventurous places. Some of them can be dramatic and some of them can be very funny and some of them are even scary. <laughs> if I had to pick one, L. Ron Hubbard short story as my favorite, I would say the Chi Chalker. That is easy, little Tom Little. Dead man killed. The boss of the lazy bee. Buckley plays a hunt. Sabotage this guy. When shadows fall. The Iron Duke. Phantom Patrol. <laughs> the most memorable moment in that story, and I'm not gonna give it away. It was a detective story about people being turned into zombies. They're zombies, they don't stop. They just keep coming at you, coming at you. I'm going to kill you. I always like a good villain. Here you have this meek little man who's suddenly put in a position where he's not a fighter, but he's on a warship. Somebody was trying to blow up the ship and they were trying to escape from it. And it was like one guy against a thousand. He figures out this equation that allows him to teleport instantly and it gets him into all kinds of trouble. There's kicking, punching, sword fighting. People are dying around him and the guy's just eating. And he never got killed. It's like a cat with nine lives. Not until the last five minutes. We don't know what's going to happen. Many times I found myself kind of sneaking toward the end of the book to see who the killer was. And need I tell you, the ending was just the creme de la creme. For me, what I got most out of it is just the enjoyment of using my imagination uh, to turn his words into a picture. His canvas of creation in any of his novel is just like most people can't even sit and imagine. A master at descriptions, and I'm always fascinated with very few words. He paints a perfect picture in your mind. One of the most positive things about the way the books have been put together in the Over on Hubbard series uh, is that the audio books are at a professional level that you don't see often. You could almost call them ear movies because it's like watching a movie with your ears because you hear everything. You've got the background music, you've got the sound effects, you got the actors going at each other, you know. Spaceships take off and, and land and, and you know, and my imagination was, was going a mile a minute to thinking, wow, well, okay, I'm, I'm putting all this in the pictures. When you're listening to it where you have a lot of time, it's like, oh, I could pop in another one. <laughs> you just go to the next one. After listening to some of the stories from the Golden Age, I, I want to go out and do something. I want to go, you know, enjoy some adventure. I want to go fight some evil dude. <laughs> After you read his books, you could feel like you could do anything. Like, it's just, it motivates you. It gives you a sense of energy and, and empowerment that you can become that character and you can make a difference. You know what I'm saying? Say, hey, if L. Ron Hubbard could do this and he did so and so, let me. I, I gotta work on something how I can create things that will have the meaning that he did in my own way. He's able to master not just one genre, but all of the genres. He sort of has his own genre, like the L. Ron Hubbard genre. It's an optimistic genre. It's not only are we going to be here a hundred years from now, or a thousand years, or ten thousand years from now, things are going to get better. His story seems to speak more to the fearlessness and the joy of being alive. It always winds around that there's a good message in it. There's something that you learn. It's something that you learn that's a basic truth. I believe that no matter which vehicle he used in these stories, his purpose was to bless and to help people. And I'm sure that a hundred years from now, people will still love him because he was the greatest writer.